All right, let's get this show on the road and talk about these vocab words. Who can we ascribe this to? Whenever I see the word ascribe, I often think of like, um, you know, you're writing a paper and you have to do sources or you have to kind of say who said what. So the correct answer is attribute. You need to stop engaging in furtive behavior. Do you know why GRE uses words like furtive? Because it's so easy to confuse them with other GRE words like fervid. And so really, they just find these words that look very similar, but actually have completely different meanings. So furtive um, actually means a GRE synonym would be surreptitious, um, but a non-GRE synonym would be the word secretive, right here, A. Chaos typically portends regime change. Now, all five of these answers make sense. Um, so really, it's just a question of what does portends means. And uh, a GRE uh, synonym would be something like augers. Um, basically, what you're looking for is it gives a warning about the future, like a harbinger. I think I'm pronouncing that right. So the correct answer is foreshadows. His words were evasive. Well, someone who speaks evasively, they're trying to avoid the truth or they're trying to conceal some kind of information. So the best um, of the five here, the best choice is going to be indefinite, kind of like indirect. He, he, he wasn't really giving a clear answer to anything. Okay, so the next one we got here is progress was hampered by the CEO. So did the CEO help? Did he hurt? Well, in this case, he hurt. The correct answer is uh, the CEO inhibited progress. The government eschewed violence. The, the mystery of this pronunciation, it's still, uh, this pronunciation still eludes me to this day. Is it askew? Is it eschew? Uh, I'll, I'll look it up after this video. I probably should have looked it up before so I don't embarrass myself, but that's okay. The pronunciation of these words is crazy. So basically, if you uh, E-S-C-H-E-W-E-D something, you move away from it, you don't participate, you don't partake, best answer is going to be abstained from. We need to expedite this process or the process. We basically need to make the process faster. Correct answer is hasten. It's a rudimentary matter. Uh, it's simple. It's not very sophisticated. Um, it's even like foundational, kind of depending on the context you're going with here. So the best answer is going to be basic. Yeah, so that's, that's the answers for these four right here. All right, what do we got now? The object is indispensable. This is one of those cases where you can actually break down a word. So you have the word dispense, like the root word, which means to like throw away or do away with. Then you have the word or the suffix a bowl, which means can, right? And then you have the prefix in, which means negative. So indispensable, you know, you break it all down, you get, you cannot throw it away. And if you cannot throw it away, then it must be essential. Number 10, they are lamenting the situation. So they're very sad, they're mourning, um, something tragic probably happened. This is the antithesis of art. Um, really, the word anti or the, the prefix anti kind of gives it away here. The antithesis is basically just the opposite of something, like the 100% contradiction of something. So this art, you know, in quotation marks, must be terrible. The evidence exculpated the accused individual. This is one of those words where if you don't study it, you don't know it. Because your initial reaction is probably it's something negative. It probably hurt the criminal or hurt the accused individual. But actually what it means is um, it vindicated or it allowed this accused individual to go free. It proved his innocence. So the correct answer is absolved. Another thing to note is A and E, they, they kind of have a similar meaning in context here. And if they have a similar meaning, well, they both can't be right. So the best answer is, uh, I mean, you can eliminate A and E there. And the correct answer is C, absolved, which means this guy is not going to jail. All right, moving on. So we got John here. John likes to go to parties, but they don't like him to go to the parties. He probably sneaks in. Uh, he was slighted by other guests, which means he was spurned. He was ignored. You know, he was kind of rejected. Um, notice this is a verb, and then there's also the adjective slight. So that's another trick that GRE loves to do. They'll give you these words that have multiple parts of speech with different definitions. You know, some of my favorite examples are like color. You know, color, uh, the GRE likes to use this as a verb. Um, another one would be like inform. Now, 
This is a case where the part of speech doesn't change, but they have multiple meanings for the verb part of speech. So inform, you know, just in normal speech means like to give information. But on the GRE, it kind of has the same meaning as color, like influence. All right, 14, confidence in the project is waning. Uh, you can think about the, the tide or the moon. I think they say the moon waxes and wanes. Um, so the correct answer is um, it's declining. Confidence is going down. 15, Frank severed his relationship with his dad. This is a very sad story. Uh, what's that song? Uh, Cat in the Cradle, that song about the, the horrible relationship between the, the son and the dad. So that's kind of what you got going on here. Uh, Frank discontinued his relationship with his dad. Um, Clarissa's outlook on life is provincial. The way I like to do this one is I think of the word province. And if you're from a province, um, I kind of like to think you're like grew up on a farm. And if you grew up on a farm, maybe your outlook is not that worldly. Maybe it's kind of narrow. So correct answer is uh, B, narrow. 17, the audience members were mostly nonchalant. Um, I think what you should do here is um, eliminate answers. So disinterested means unbiased. That's not what I'm looking for here. Combative means like they want to fight. Moved means like they they were emotionally moved by it. Uh, riveted means like super interested. So the best answer here is composed, which means cool, calm. Um, it was kind of hard to get a read on him kind of thing. 18, he approached work in a fastidious manner. So somebody who uh, is fastidious, they pay attention to details. They're like a perfectionist. Correct answer is meticulous. At hearing the news, he had a stoic expression. Um, stoic was, I think, some kind of branch of philosophy, maybe in ancient Greece or, or ancient Rome. And basically, um, the whole philosophy was kind of like, to my knowledge, you know, this could be completely wrong kind of like sitting with one's emotions, not outwardly expressing them. So the correct answer is um, A, unemotional. She feigned nervousness. Well, this woman is a faker. So if you feign something, you're pretending. Correct answer is simulated. She simulated that she was nervous, which means she was not nervous. All right, we're getting there. We're getting there. Shinichi is in a pensive mood. So what, what kind of mood is Shinichi in? Well, he's, a, he's in a thinking mood. Yeah, he's in a thinking mood. So correct answer is contemplative. Uh, the candidate's political acumen was wanting. So wanting on the GRE, of course, means lacking. So this candidate was not good at the political acumen. And acumen here means uh, shrewdness, you know, kind of like um, kind of uh, adroitness or ability to operate in the political sphere with some skill. Please spare me these esoteric concerns. Um, you know, kind of hard to understand, kind of um, away from us, maybe even too advanced for us to understand. So the correct answer is obscure. One should not be partial. Um, partial essentially means you are not giving an unbiased viewpoint. So the correct answer is one should not be biased right there. All right, six more. The book befuddled most. I think befuddled is one of those words where you can just hear it and you can kind of guess. It Doesn't it just sound like perplexed? Yeah, that's correct. The family was advised to relocate to a more salutary, again, not sure about the pronunciation, climate. Um, this essentially just means good. Yeah, that's all it means. It just means good. So the correct answer is uh, beneficial. It can also mean like health giving, like health giving. Um, but that's not one of the options here. So the best answer is A, beneficial. These are myopic ideas. Uh, these are basically ideas that don't, that were not clearly thought out. They, they were not, they did not undergo a clear thought process. So the correct answer is unimaginative. Obviously, the company touts its products. Um, this is where the GRE can really get the non-native speakers. The correct answer is pushes. And of course, a non-native speaker is probably not that familiar with the verb push in the commercial sense. So like when a company pushes a product, it means it advertises it, it promotes it, it tries to get it out in the world and tries to get people to buy it, uh, it sells it. So that's the best answer here. It pushes the uh, products. 
All right, last two, 29. After the movie, Claire felt somnolent. Um, so this movie must have sucked because she was tired. So she probably felt sleepy. Maybe the movie was boring. And then finally, this policy supersedes others. Uh, this is just one of those words you have to memorize. You can't really figure it out from the actual you know, components of it. It just means replaces. And so the correct answer is going to be supplants. All right, that's it for this one, guys. This was vocab test number 10, which means we now have 300 words in the books. Uh, oops, not vocab test 300, number 10. And we have 300 words uh, complete. And if you guys have any questions, shoot me an email. Greg Matt testing at Gmail. And I will get another one of these bad boys out, hopefully next week. I've been pretty good. I've been getting them out uh, every week. Yeah, I, occasionally I'll skip a week or whatever, but I've been m more or less pretty good about getting these vocab tests out. All right, I hope you guys did well, and until next time.